Good evening. My name is Ashutosh Kher. I work for Furnace Improvements. Our company is in the business of revamping fire heaters and we increase the capacity of existing fire heaters, we reduce NOx emissions, we improve efficiency, uh, we also improve the run length of your fire heaters. We also supply new fire heaters if you are needing one. Uh, this webinar or webcast what we are doing today is to share the knowledge on fire heaters. So today I will be talking about very basics on fire heaters. What are the major components in any fire heater? We will be covering uh, basic components and heater nomenclature. Uh, fire heaters as you are aware are used in refining and petrochemical plants for heating of hydrocarbons. Uh, they are generally very large equipment. They are used wherever heat exchangers cannot be used economically. And in fire heaters, they are used for high temperature heat transfer. And we are providing energy by burning of fuel. Fuel in the form of oil and gas is burnt in fire heaters and they convert the chemical energy in the fuels to thermal energy and that thermal energy is transferred to the hydrocarbon fluids which is flow, uh, flowing in the tubes. So any furnace we are talking about will have three major components you know we will they will have a radiant section where most of the heat anywhere between 60 to 80 percent of the heat is transferred by radiant section. Then we have convection section where 20 to 40 percent of the heat is transferred in the convection section. And the third component is a stack where the flue gases are disposed safely to the atmosphere. So the, these are the three major components we are showing over here, a radiant section, convection section and stack. When we talk about radiant section, again we can break it up into three sections. We can break up into firebox. Firebox consists of steel casing on the outside, refractory lining which is used for containing the heat losses, minimizing containing the heat and minimizing the heat losses and tube supports. Tube supports are used for holding the tubes. And then we have the radiant coil in which the fluid is flowing uh, throughout the radiant section and absorbing heat and burners located on the floor of the fire heater uh, which are providing the heat to the fluid. So these are the again three major components of radiant section. I'm showing you a plan view of a vertical cylindrical radiant section. This is basically a heater floor view. You can see six burners installed in a circle. That circle is known as burner circle diameter. You can also see the radiant tubes which are installed again in a circle and that circle is known as tube circle diameter. And then we have the refractory lining and steel casing on the outside. You can see an excess door in this picture. You can see refractory lining and peep holes in this picture for a vertical cylindrical heater. The second type of heater we normally see in the industry is a cabin heater and here is a picture of an upper radiant section and arch section and you can see the header boxes in a cabin heaters the tubes are laid out horizontally and we have header boxes sometimes on both the sides which are containing the return vents. You can also see a, this is a very small heater so you can see a convection section uh, in this picture as well. So, Convection section is the second most uh, important component in the fire heater. Here the heat is recovered from the flue gases by means of flue gas velocity. So typically we will have three rows of bare tubes which are known as shield tubes or shock tube followed by fin or studded tubes where the heat is recovered. The tubes are mostly arranged in triangular pitch and we have the return bends 
housed in a header box so that the flue gases don't flow through the return vents. The header boxes are on both sides. So there is a cross flow. The flue gases are flowing from <clears throat> bottom to top and the fluid is flowing from uh, top to bottom in a counter current manner and that's how the heat is transferred. You can see the casing, you can see the header boxes in the picture. <clears throat> this is a plan view of a convection section for a, again a vertical cylindrical heater. Feed generally enters the convection section because it is cold over there and uh, the once it is heated then the fluid is transferred from the convection section to the radiant section. That transfer takes place through the pipes which are known as crossovers. External crossovers are generally used nowadays. You can also see a tube pulling door for uh, for the maintenance purpose or for removing the tubes if they get damaged. The 3D model we are putting over here shows a helical coil with a burner in the center. <clears throat> helical coils are used for small heaters. As I said in the convection section we have bare tube generally first two or first three rows and then we have extended surface tubes. If the extended surface could be fin tubes or studded tubes and then we have the steel casing on the outside and the refractory corbels. Refractory corbels or baffles are needed because we have the tubes arranged in triangular pitch and because of the triangular pitch since they are staggered we need to put corbels on in alternate rows on each side to prevent the flue gas bypassing. Here the fin tubes, you can see the fin tube and the studded tubes. The <coughs> fin tubes are solid fins that is used in uh, fire heater industry. Typically we use only up to 5 fins per inch and uh, 1 inch height. Uh, fins can increase the heat transfer area of the tube by anywhere between 6 to 10 times. So fins are very very efficient and because of fins the convection section sizes have come down. Same thing with the studded tubes. Studded tubes are very sturdy and they are mostly used for oil firing because they are easier to clean. The horizontal tubes, they need to be supported every 35 diameters or 20 feet, whichever is maximum, and uh, to keep them straight. So this is a picture of an intermediate tube sheet uh, these tube sheets are made out of high chrome nickel alloy because they see the high flue gas temperatures. So they are pretty expensive uh, and important component in the fire heaters. Once the heat is recovered, we have the cold flue gases and they need to be disposed in the stack. So we use offtake ducts to transfer the flue gases from the convection to the stack. You can see a damper. A damper is like a butterfly wall which controls the draft in the furnace. So stacks are again a very important component. They, their primary function is to dispose the flue gases. The secondary function is to create a draft in the fire heater. So they are basically dual function. Uh, stacks are generally provided with strakes to break the wind velocities, high wind velocities. They are also provided with ladders and platforms because for pollution monitoring purposes, uh, nozzles are provided at high elevations to monitor the NOx content and CO content and oxygen content. So uh, these ladders and platforms are provided. So in summary, uh, I want to list all the important components as per API 560. We have an excess door in the radiant section. Then we have an arch, which is the roof of the radiant section. Breaching is connecting the convection section to the stack. That portion of the duct or heater is known as breaching. Then we have burner, mostly located on the floor. Uh, steel casing on the outside, convection section for recovering heat, 
crossovers from transporting the fluid from convection to radiant, radiant tubes where the tube fluid is being heated in the radiant section, fin tubes in the convection section, corbels, we already talked about it, radiant section, shield tubes are the bare tubes which are shielding the fin tubes from the radiation in the radiant section, tube pulling door, observation and peep doors, tube supports, refractory lining, damper, concrete piers, stacks and platforms. So these are the important components in any fire heater, no matter whether it is in the radiant, uh, in the refinery or in the petrochemical plant. Uh, hope the information what I have provided is useful for you. If you need any other information, please contact us on our LinkedIn page or on our Facebook page or send us an email. Thanks once again for watching the video and please continue to keep on watching our channel. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.